Welcome to this Advent worship on the third Sunday of Advent from Trinity Lutheran Church in Marshalltown, Iowa. Trinity is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of the prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our responsorial psalm is from Psalm 146. Our response is, The Lord lifts up 
those who are bowed down. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations, hallelujah. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. Alleluia, I am sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. 
I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we are asked, who are we? We have a couple of options in answering. We can answer in the negative. We can say who we are not. Or we can answer in the positive. We can say who we are. In our gospel reading for today, when it comes to who John the Baptist is, the gospel answers both in the negative, who John is not, and in the positive, who John is. We are told that some priests come to John and ask, who are you? And John answers in the negative. He tells them who he is not. I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I am not the prophet. Perhaps they were hoping that this is who John was. I don't know. And perhaps maybe John was even a little bit flattered that they would think and ask if he was the Messiah. I think I would have been a little flattered if someone asked me that. I think we all struggle just a bit with messianic temptations, by, but hear me out here. I don't mean that we're tempted to think that we are the Messiah. But sometimes I think we are tempted to want to be more for other people than we can be. Sometimes we are tempted to want other people to be more for us than they can be. I have learned that as a pastor. I can't be everything that people want me to be. And people can't be everything that I want them to be. John says, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not Elijah. I'm not the prophet. It's good to remember that we can't always be what others want us to be. And they can't always be what we want them to be for us. So who is John? The answer to this is also telling us something about who we are. To John's identity, there is an answer in the positive. Who is John? He is a man sent from God. John has a mission and a purpose. We are also people sent from God. Our existence is not just some kind of cosmic happenstance. Our existence has been planned by God, and God has given to us a purpose. We are of divine origin. Just like John, we have come from God and have been sent by God into this world. But sent for what? What was John sent for? We are told to be a witness. John came as a witness to testify to the light, to point people to Jesus. I was in a church once that in the back of their worship space had a rather large statue of John the Baptist with his arm outstretched and his finger pointing to the altar where the crucifix was hanging. John pointing to Jesus. That was the mission for which he was sent, to testify to the light. That is our mission too. We are to witness to Jesus. We are to testify to the light. We are to point to Jesus. When we choose to forgive, we point to Jesus. 
when we work as peacemakers and reconcilers, we point to Jesus. When we stand for what is just and equitable, we point to Jesus. And when we deny ourselves for the good of another person or for a greater good, when we do that, we point to Jesus. But it isn't just our goodness that points to Jesus because we are not all goodness. There is more to us than that. When we admit our brokenness, our sinfulness, when we admit the messiness of our lives and that we are people who fall down, when we admit that and are honest about it and yet we hold to the promise that nevertheless we are God's beloved because God's grace is that amazing and God's mercy is that unbounded. It's not just our goodness that points to Jesus. It's that other part of us as well. We point to Jesus who came to save sinners like us. We point to Jesus who came to bind up broken people like us. We came to Jesus who came we point to Jesus who came to clean up messy people like us. We point to Jesus who came to lift up fallen people just like us. Yes, indeed, in our goodness and the good that we do, we point to Jesus, but it is also in our sinfulness and our brokenness and our messiness that we point to Jesus and his amazing grace and unbounded mercy. Who was John? Not the Messiah, not Elijah, not the prophet. He was a man sent from God to testify to the light, to point to Jesus. Who are we? People sent from God, witnesses to the light, pointing to Jesus who is the true light that the darkness cannot overcome. Amen. Together we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, your goodness is boundless. With faith in your care for us, we pray. Bring renewed joy and thankfulness into our lives this Advent season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen those who are facing adversity or uncertainty about the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give patience and strength to families of persons afflicted with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring all people of goodwill into respect for one another and show us how to work together across our differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us courage to stand up and to stand by the sight of children who are bullied and ridiculed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are broken in body, mind, or spirit, we place them into your strong and loving hands. 
Give to them the help they need, especially those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for providing us good and faithful bishops. We ask your blessing upon our bishops, Elizabeth and Amy. May their lives testify to the light and point to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the God whose coming we long for fill us with peace and renew our faith. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. 
Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. On the night before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When the supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, Father, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth into his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. We remember those of our parish whose anniversary of death we commemorate this week. Burr, Helene, Jim, and Lyle. Thank you for the eternal life they now share with you and all the saints. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, living water, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. The body of Christ, amen. The blood of Christ, amen.
gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At the end of every worship, we pray for three of our parish families. Loving God, bless our families and fill our homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Especially send your blessing upon Dustin and Ruth and their family, Bob and Nancy and their family, Ben and Sherry and their family. Protect them, guide them, and deepen their love for you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O saving Lord Jesus, hear our pleas as we come before you to pray for deliverance and protection for the coronavirus. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for those who have died and who are dying, for those who are grieving, and for all of our healthcare workers. Give us each the determination to do all we can to stop the spread. Especially put a shield or protection around all our precious children. Give insight and skill to those who are working to provide the vaccine we need. We commend ourselves, our community, our country, and our world into your hands. Lord, we love you and adore you. Amen. The Lord be with you. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The ever-present Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.